Having any vehicle travel through an urban environment will always pose a risk to safety, be it a car, bus, or even something as simple as a scooter. Many early tramways were involved in accidents and collisions with people, horses, and automobiles, so naturally attention soon turned to making trams much safer for pedestrians. This led to companies coming up with their own safety devices, with varying degrees of success. Initially, many trams, streetcars, and trolleys were pulled by horse, meaning there was little threat of a person being run over, as not only were the horses relatively slow, but they could easily stop if someone happened to be in the way of the line. However, when most trams were electrified around the 1890s, concerns for safety soon arose. Not only were they faster than horse-drawn carriages, but they also lacked any protection at the front should they ever collide with a pedestrian. A person being dragged under the trolley's wheels was never a concern with the horse-drawn type because of the horses in front. These new electric types, however, very much posed that threat. To get around this, many trolley companies in North America simply fitted them with cow catchers, similar to ones used on locomotives. These were essentially wedge-shaped plows designed to lift obstructions off the track and allow them to fall to the side. While these worked for locomotives, they weren't ideal for streetcars. Firstly was the safety of the driver. Because cow catchers were designed to lift obstructions, there was a possibility of the person or animal in the way hitting the cab. This was never a problem on steam locomotives as their cabs were mounted at the back, but with trolley cabs set at the front, it posed a safety risk for the driver. This is also why modern US diesels also have flatter cow catchers instead of the classic wedge design. Secondly, because of how far they stuck out from the front, they greatly increased the radius it occupied while making tight turns, not something that's ideal in a crowded urban environment. And third, a permanent fixed cow catcher also made it more difficult to couple multiple trolleys together. As such, many alternative ideas and designs were tried out. One of the more popular designs was simply a flat metal platform fixed to the front of the car. The idea was these frames would act as a kind of platform for pedestrians to fall onto instead of the ground, and by extension, under the trolley. Some of these were designed to be raised or lowered to make it easier to couple multiple trolleys together. The only real drawbacks with these were how high off the ground they were positioned, as if you were unlucky enough to be in the way, having a metal bar bump into your ankles or shins and falling onto a metal frame wouldn't feel pleasant. Also, many trams had protruding couplers, meaning there was a good chance that if you fell onto one of these platforms, you'd likely end up banging your head against said coupler. Some cars were fitted with a vertical frame as well to help protect people from such an injury. A more pedestrian-friendly version of this design came in the form of basket-type fenders. These were similar in design, but also featured a net fitted across the frame to help cushion the impact. In 1902, the Consolidated Car Fender Company had four different models of its Providence Fender. These were designed with curved, flexible pieces of metal to make them more springy and help absorb the forces from impact. They were kept folded up, and if the driver saw an obstruction on the line, they could simply press a pedal to drop the scoop and safely carry the obstruction until the tram could stop. Despite the metal being flexible, Flexible, these fenders were surprisingly strong, with some sources saying they were capable of carrying a horse. It took until 1908 for tramways in North America to trial and adopt the system used in England, that being the wheel guard devised by Hudson and Bowring Limited of Manchester. A bumper that hung low to the ground was fitted to the underside of the tram that was connected to a scoop set behind it. If an obstruction on the line hit the bumper, it would swing back and drop the scoop in front of the wheels. This system is still in place on some trams to this day. Some tram companies, however, just took the simpler option and stuck with having a metal bar fixed to the front, or a more refined type of cow catcher. With so many different fenders to choose from with so many advantages and disadvantages each, in the end, most trolley companies just stuck with whatever they already had attached to their trams, with some still using nets and metal frames well until they were taken out of service in the 50s and 60s. Many trams in North America have since been replaced by roads, while the ones in Europe and the rest of the world nowadays have a low body that covers most of the wheels, and use a simple cow catcher or wheel guard to prevent people from being dragged under or injured. Nevertheless, it's still interesting to look back and see some of the strange things used to improve public safety. And a rather humorous notion that years ago, it wasn't just possible for you to catch a tram, but sometimes it was also possible for the tram to catch you too. Subscribe for more.